everyone, welcome to another episode of the Bleeding Metal podcast. My name is Pia, she, her, and today I kind of gonna interview you. Please introduce yourself. <laughs> <laughs> hey everyone, I'm Kiki, your also co-host, uh, also pronouns she, her, and um, yeah, I'm so happy to be here. <laughs> <laughs> yes, thank you. And I'm really, really curious about your experience from past weekend because you were at Tusca Festival and you were not only there as a visitor, you had all area access, crew access, you had your own stage. <laughs> yes. Tell us tell us more. <laughs> oh my god, it was amazing. It was incredible. I'm not sure how much in into how much detail we went in the last episode when we announced that we were hosting the Tusca Forum at the festival, but it's been a thrilling past couple of months. And it, it feels so good, you know? <laughs> like, I sent an email asking if I could moderate one of the panels in the forum and ended up hosting it all together and organizing it all. So uh, it's pretty amazing. Mm -hmm. I got reminded of this because you said, be, because you mentioned that I had a crew pass with uh, all access and it was super nice because during the the emails in preparation to all of this and during the organization at some point and I don't remember exactly what but at some point the festival director um, Eka referred to us as crew and I was just like shocked and taken aback and, and also very moved and and it was super nice and <laughs> I, I I didn't really expect it <laughs> It was actually necessary, yeah. um, and we did mm -hmm. a lot of work. So it was, it was like it felt like appreciation and recognition, and and that is always very important in a in a working partnership. Yeah, and um, it's also important because I remember I had an interview with Eka in 2017, and we yes. did that in his office. His office back then was a van, or um, at the festival. Yeah. <laughs> uh, A mobile home <laughs> and mm -hmm. we were on top of that and so we were in the backstage of the backstage so to speak oh. and we then wanted to go to the Tusca Forum and because he had this all area access of course as right. the organizer of everything um, we were able to go there so fast because every door was open for us. Everybody said, yeah, you can go, you can go. And yeah, yeah, yeah. that's when you actually work at a festival, that is important because the distances can be so long. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And uh, to that end, we will, <laughs> we will, I will speak on that a little later. Um, but uh, yeah, it was, it was really nice to know that they had planned, planned us into the catering, for example. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, we because did this time to stand in a lane to wait for food and everything. Yeah, exactly. And it was very good, by the way. I remember food um, at the Rock Arts Festival when we were there and also had crew access. That was mm -hmm. also very good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So the people who are working so hard at these festivals are well taken care of. That is, that is very good to know as well. Yeah. Where do we start? It was such, so many things happened. It was, it's just so overwhelming. <laughs> <laughs> Let's start with your trip. Also tell me how, uh, who was with you? Well, I arrived to Helsinki the evening of Wednesday. I wanted to be there all of Thursday to go to the venue, see that everything is ready. And it was also Pride Week. It was Helsinki Pride. We know this. It's always the same weekend. I wanted to visit a few or at least one of the of the events at Pride Week. So I went to this one queer burlesque. It was really cool. It was at this hotel uh, with an amazing view of, of Helsinki and the very late sunset. It was it was really beautiful. And then I was there uh, the whole of Thursday as I, as I had planned. And I went to pick up my accreditation and to see the forum, to meet the producer, That was working with me and to meet the light and sound technician that were working with us and uh and saw the the little hall that was ours for the first time and also when i arrived and it was this was 24 hours before 
doors opening of the festival and the stages weren't completely built yet and I was like oh my god these are such pros (laughs) 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 that they are gonna finish all of this in less than 24 hours Mm -hmm. (laughs) yeah it was really cool Our, our forum venue wasn't ready either we were waiting for some decoration we could at least like see what was what was still being being brought in there were these couches already and um, and we were thinking about how many chairs we or how many seats we needed, how many people would be there. And and yeah, and it seemed it didn't seem as big because we knew we had a 120, 130 person capacity at the forum stage and it didn't look that big, mm-hmm. but it was very nice and cozy and modern, too. Were you there alone? Until then, yes. Um because our friend and supporter and uh, ex-co-host Steffi and her friend Krista were arriving a little later. Later in the afternoon, I went back to the venue with Krista only, though, because uh, Steffi hurt her foot, which was very, very unfortunate. Right after landing or right after arriving into the city, into Helsinki, she twisted her ankle really, really badly and couldn't walk. It was super swollen. Um, the heat didn't help either because, uh, yeah... Until Friday, we had about 26 degrees and Celsius, obviously. And uh, Krista and I went to pick up their badges and uh, wristbands and to finish setting up the, the venue in the evening after somebody else had also done their sound check because we were sharing the, the venue with uh, the local Radio Rock, mm-hmm. who is also a big sponsor of the festival. They were having a pre-festival radio show right from the venue uh, to warm up the fans as well. And they were doing that on Friday morning. So they also had to go and check that everything was ready. Mm -hmm. We checked that the laptop and the screen worked together. We did a bit of a sound check with the microphones and the headsets. And that that was it for that day. We were pretty tired as well. From the travels, and I had been preparing all my questions <laughs> and other things. We're so professional. <laughs> I am so. I, I felt that. I really felt that. And but this was honestly for me personally and professionally, it was a big realization. The fact that yes, I had had months to prepare that, and it was not only to prepare the questions because also I wanted artists i had i had prepared the topics i wanted to talk with every artist about before i sent the request even to their pr person Mm -hmm. or to their pr contacts but like the real questions i was preparing after the artists had confirmed and the artists confirmed very very late some of them never even said either no or yes. <laughs> but I was also writing the press release. I was um, I was also designing the what was going to be projected in the in the background on the screen in the background of the sessions. I was uh, also telling, you know, telling all of the the people where they had to go at what time, preparing the schedule, um, managing um, a software that we used to get the the questions from the audience that we were going to ask during the sessions as well and um and also making sure that Steffi and Krista knew what to do that we had our tasks clear who was responsible for what so that I could while we're while we were there I just wanted to concentrate and focus only on on the interviews and um and so all of that requires preparation and that left me with literally no time to actually prepared the interviews themselves except when I was already in in Helsinki and I knowing this I should have been in a panic but first of all I work I think quite well under pressure (laughs) yes with approaching (laughs) deadlines and the other thing is I had this inner calm and I can only explain it to myself even with the fact that I just deep down I knew I've been doing we've been doing this for over 10 years and I know that an interview it's not my time to shine really I my job is to help 
my interviewee tell their story. And that means I have to listen a lot. I have to know um, what they're about. And I just have to, uh, yeah, to try to bring out whatever I think is, is most important about their, what they have to say as well. Yeah. As you said, we've been doing this for so long. So we are also able to freestyle. <laughs> mm -hmm. And you also had the topics um, with which you knew what you want to, to, to bring on stage. Yeah. So um, it wasn't like you needed so many infos about the band that you had to prepare a lot. Uh, you focused on topics and you are in these topics since forever. <laughs> so Right, right. And some yeah, mental health, for example, is a topic that is very special to me and or very important to me, and I talk about it a lot. Yeah. Also, I, I realized my streaming on Twitch also prepared me for this mm -hmm. because I I cannot see them, but I have the an, an audience that I am talking to, unlike when the two of us are talking here on the podcast. And um, I think just all of the many things we've been doing were, had prepared me for this moment, and I was really relaxed. And when it was finally necessary or, or when the time was, was actually coming to a close, I really got great ideas, like inspiration struck. And I could just write down how I wanted to introduce the people, if I wanted to make a joke, if I wanted to, to or, or what exactly I wanted to ask the questions, how exactly I wanted to ask the questions. And it was, it just was just a nice flow. <laughs> And um, yeah, which also happened, um, yeah, during Thursday evening, Friday morning, Friday evening. Who were your guests and the topics? My guests for the topics, well, the very first session we had was a panel about artificial intelligence in metal. Mm -hmm. The second one was Alisa white Glass from Arch Enemy. We talked about her activism. Mm -hmm. Then we had... Sami Elbana from Lost Society, mm -hmm. talking about mental health. That was just a Friday. On Saturday, we had Turmion Catilot with a session that derailed itself in the most wonderful way. <laughs> <laughs> And then we had Marco Hietala. It was a very, very personal interview. I wanted it to be... This, and that's why I called it a guiding light in metal. I wanted us all to learn from Marco's experiences. And it was very personal. It got very emotional. At some point, I thought I would have to have someone take over because I, 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 I had a lump in my throat. I thought I was going to cry. Mm -hmm. It was really beautiful. Nice. Yeah. Our future episodes will be about the interviews. So uh, you out there are going to hear them. But um, please tell me a bit more about the first panel, the artificial intelligence. That was a kind of workshop, right? Yeah. And I can give us a summary without too much uh, spoilers. Because yes, we recorded all of the sessions and you will be listening to them throughout the next two months. Mm -hmm. So until the end of September, we're going to be releasing the episodes that we recorded at Tusca. We had this interactive workshop prepared And it was called Making an AI-Generated Single. And in the beginning, I thought it would be amazing if we could like really finish it in the 45 minutes that we had. If we could have a bot make the music, chat GPT make us some lyrics, maybe even have an AI voice do some vocals. At some point, I even thought we could even mix them together, like completely produce the song Mm -hmm. and also have an AI-generated uh, cover art and make it a complete single that could be more or less released immediately. Mm -hmm. And that was the intention. You will hear how it turned out. <laughs> 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 But we had, we also wanted to make it a learning process, especially for newcomer bands and see how they relate to the new technologies. So we had um, two bands from the Tusca Cult stage, And what I learned later, I thought the Tusca Cult stage was, you know, like the local newcomer stage and, um, and that was super cool already. But even cooler, you can get yourself on this stage by volunteering on the festival. Ah. So 
Working at a festival is also pretty cool because you have the chance, you know, to meet cool people, to kind of look at the bands. Of course, you know, they're there only to look at the bands. You're there to work and volunteer and make this amazing event happen, right? But if you do that, by doing that, you can get your band onto the stage. Mm -hmm. That's and amazing. that is really cool. Yeah. So um, the, the people that, the volunteers, the cult volunteers that work there this year will be playing on the cult stage next year. Mm -hmm. And that's amazing. So the bands were Galvanizer and uh, Slash the Smile. And Slash the Smile are really young and super newcomers. And they had already been using ChatGPT for band purposes. Mm -hmm. So that was that was super um, interesting to, to learn. Um, in the episode, you will hear how and why they already use that. And Gavanizer had a little bit more of an old school approach, but they know their music and they know how to make music. So their input in the session was also very interesting. And we also had the help and support of Xavier Nelson. You know him as the maker of the of the podcast Jingle. Mm -hmm. He has also already worked at least with the visual AI generation mm -hmm. making cover art. And so that was also very interesting to have him help out with all of the the creation of this. This was the biggest session. We had six people on stage and we had questions from the audience. It was also the first session and the digital Q&A um, didn't work that well. So uh, yeah, we'll have to see how the, how the, the audio is on that one. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, it was really interesting. It was pretty cool to start with that one and to have people be interested already. Honestly, I thought maybe five people will show up. <laughs> and this was the first one, the first session, and it looked already like a, a pretty good audience. Mm -hmm. yeah. You said you were also able to ask questions digitally. So have you streamed the interviews and stuff? No. So in the background, we had this projection Uh, which you can see on Instagram on our pictures in the design of the festival with our logo and uh, the link to our podcast and also a QR code. And the QR code directed you to a page where without any registration, you could just submit your questions for the Q&A. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what we did. And um, it got better <laughs> with time. <laughs> 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 I got better at remembering to ask people to scan it and do it. And people got better at actually scanning the code and submitting their questions. Yeah, yeah it's a learning process for everyone. <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, is there anything else that you can tell us about the sessions without spoiling us for the upcoming episodes? Of course. What, what was the most impressive, for example, for you? There are a few things that I want to to say about this, and I might repeat myself in the following in the following episodes when I talk about or when we talk about the sessions a little bit more in detail. Mm -hmm. But our interview with Elisa White Gloss was the fullest from the audience, was the most wanted, I guess. Mm -hmm. The people from the local radio were there, and all of a sudden, also uh, the PR person from Elisa came up to me right before we started. And she was like, oh, a few other people with podcasts asked if they can record the interview. Uh -huh. I was very caught by surprise. And I asked, like, how do they imagine that? Like, what what, what are the ex their expectations? And she said, I have no idea. They just asked me now. So I'm just the messenger. I'm guessing they're just going to put their recording devices, like, on a table with you or something. And I imagined like a press conference, mm -hmm. right? And I thought, hmm. And honestly, I'm I'm kind of I'm kind of proud that my <laughs> sort of maybe protective uh, impulse took over because I realized this is not a press conference. Mm -hmm. This is our forum. They can write about the forum. They can talk about the forum on their podcasts, right? But I organize this shit. This is my work. This is, <laughs> I won't be robbed. <laughs> <laughs> Because, you know, it is like stealing uh, someone else's work. If you just, if you are doing an interview, you've been working on this for a while and they just go there and record it and then release it as their own, probably not even mentioning us anywhere. Yeah. And you have absolutely no control when they're gonna 
release mm -hmm. it. So when or how? Yeah. Um, if they would take quotes from it for their reports and stuff like that, I wouldn't have a problem with that. Of course. But imagining they would just upload it somewhere before we release it here on the podcast. Yeah. No. <laughs> I'm very open to collaborations. If somebody mm -hmm. had approached us months in advance, even weeks in advance and said, hey, I, I realize what you got there going on. It's pretty cool. How about we do something together? So, sure. But like last minute. So, um, yeah, that was that was very weird. Uh, but also it made me feel good a little bit because I thought we're doing such a good job that somebody actually wants to steal it. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes, um, Alisa only had 20 minutes for us, but they were really cool 20 minutes. She had not been very well informed about what was happening. She was also a little surprised I guess she literally told me like I have no idea what this is mm -hmm. and that also made me feel bad for her because I thought she was informed I thought she had gotten my my thousand word email with all of the information <laughs> and yeah. uh, okay maybe not so much but that's obviously a note for myself as well like the communication between PR people and artists and through which I have to work can also be better Yeah, but I also think, well, when you put all this information in the email, they could just forward it. That's what I do. Yeah. Like, this is the info, the FAQ or whatever, mm -hmm. so that they can do copy paste or just forward my email with all the info to the artist. That would be easiest. Yeah, and a lot of them do so. Yeah. But yeah, we had a few who had just no idea what was happening. And mm -hmm. we had to tell them that second. And um, and I'm guessing, well, Elisa is all about her activism. This is a lot of what she talks about in interviews, so that was that's not too bad. But I'm thinking of Samuel Bana, for example. We were, we were talking with him about something more personal, about mental health. And if he had not been informed that it was even a topic beforehand, that would have been maybe even worse. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, that is something that, that can be better. Maybe... Maybe we can reach out to the people themselves on social media to write them a short message like, yeah, we're going to do this at the Tusca Forum and um, do you want some further information or has this been forwarded to you? We cannot make sure that they actually read it, but that it's worth a try, I guess. That is true. Yeah, that's true. The interview itself went very smoothly. Um, I was thrilled because... Alyssa was one of the few um, women in metal at her level that we hadn't talked with so far. And so it was it was very exciting for me to finally get to um, ask her some questions. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then we also had Sami Albana already there. Um, as I said, with Alyssa, the, the, the venue was packed. And everybody also wanted to take a picture with her. And, and she was super nice. After we took our selfie with the audience, she took her time to say hi to a few fans and to take pictures until somebody somebody actually had to tell her, we had, I'm sorry, but we have to leave. And also that was, <laughs> that was incredible to me because like half an hour later, well, not half an hour, an hour later, she was on stage. Mm -hmm. And I was thinking... She had to warm up. She had to dress up. Her makeup was already gorgeous. But that, all of that takes time. How was mm -hmm. she herself not already in a hurry? <laughs> and also so grateful that she did that so short notice and so shortly before her uh, stage time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was crazy. Uh, that woman is incredible. Mm. I know from some musicians that they really need some time before the stage to prepare themselves also mentally. Exactly. For example, um, the vocalist from Cradle of Filth, Danny Filth, mm -hmm. he does the makeup all by himself and that's his time to calm down and to prepare for what will happen on stage. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah well, all of this was happening and Alisa was leaving. Um, Sami was already being prepped with the mic and everything, and we could just continue our talks. And that one was was also very, very emotional, very, very open and honest about mental health. And I think it's so very important that people like him open up 
about these important topics. You will listen to that uh, later. That was that was our Friday. That was the the busiest day, and it was it felt so good to have <laughs> to have done that. After that, we went to see a little bit of Eminence, and we caught the Gojira show, which was pretty cool. Um, and also the Arch Enemy show. And also the Arch Enemy before that. We we saw a little bit of Arch Enemy in between, right? Yeah, yeah. So that was also nice to have, to at least be able to see the big headliners of every day. Mm -hmm. And, well, Sunday was all bands, so... I'm I'm happy about that as well. Yeah. yeah. That wrapped up the Friday. Um I must say about Gojira, this time I was not as impressed as last time. Impressed as mm -hmm. last time. Yeah. I think also because I don't listen to them too much, but when I do, uh I do listen to, you know, the kind of just the hits maybe. But also, like, I think that's a, that's a, that is really cool music to, like, listen at home and headbang at home. But, like, for the big finale of the Friday, I needed a little more hype and a little more party. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I can understand that. Um, I enjoy every Gojira show because I feel like that's also what the band said on a documentary, that they, when they go on stage, they do it for... A higher power so everything they do wow. um they give to that higher power and that gives the, them something back so it's also kind of oh. spirituality that happens there and that's i yeah. can feel that so it kind of speaks to me so every gojira show is special to me <laughs> just because mm -hmm, of this mm -hmm. um yeah but if you're not so deeply into their music i can understand that it can be tiring also after a while Yeah, it was just a little bit like I could have done it with a little more, uh, yeah, just a little more energy. Mm -hmm. Yes, no, but it was, but it was good. They had also very beautiful projections in the back, and our our light expert from the forum was very impressed by the light show. So <laughs> <laughs> nice. Um, and I always remember that I saw Gujira at the Logo. That's a very small venue in Hamburg. And also at the mm -hmm. smallest stage at Wacken. <laughs> And now they are the headliners uh -huh. of such big festivals. That's really cool. Yes. That reminds me of a panel that we wanted to do and weren't able to. Um, but I talked about it all weekend long. Um, the topic was new generations of headliners of mm -hmm. metal. Because I don't know if people are aware our listeners, or even if it is still a thing. But around five years ago, a conversation started in the metal media about, and it was this, you know, very alarmist type of thing of, oh my God, what are we going to do when Iron Maiden and Megadeth and Metallica retire? And who's going to be the biggest stars in metal? Who's going to be the headliners? <laughs> and it's like, well, there you go. We have Gojira, we have Ghosts, we have Trivium, and we have bands that, despite the pandemic, are rising at a speed. And I'm talking about Lorna Shore, Spirit Box, Sleep Token, Electric Call Boy. They are just, they have taken a, a speed and a velocity upwards and everybody is impressed and And it's well-deserved that they are getting to be on the main stages of world festivals already, even if not mm -hmm. headlining just yet. So um, nobody needs to be worried about not being, not having big stars in metal in the next years. And honestly, who cares about Metallica anymore? <laughs> That's dad metal and they can retire whenever. It's granddad metal. Slipknot is dead metal. <laughs> yeah, I totally agree. <laughs> I made that joke on Twitch uh, just recently, and I'm I'm honestly so proud. Somebody was like, "Have you listened to the new Metallica yet?" And I was like, "Tell me your dad without telling me your dad." <laughs> <laughs> and I know that person, and they are so. <laughs> okay, I'll stop now. That was our Friday. 
um, Saturday started with A.A. Williams, uh, right, A.A. Williams opened the tent stage on Saturday and it was pouring rain. So on Friday, we had a very warm day. It was lovely. And then all of a sudden on Saturday, everything went to shit weather-wise. It was <laughs> pouring rain. It was colder. Um, it was beautiful, though, because A.A. Williams was in the tent stage, so everybody was taking shelter there while also um, listening to her beautiful music. It was very doomy. I really liked it. And she said something about being British and feeling responsible for the weather. <laughs> <laughs> Since she was British, uh, she was responsible for the weather. Apologies and oh well. But yeah. After A.A. Williams, there was Thurman Catilat. We were able to see a little bit of orbit culture because right afterwards, I had to pick up Thurman Catilat. Mm -hmm. I went to pick them up and I realized they were just coming down from the stage. They had maybe half an hour to cool off. And I was already mm -hmm. there at their backstage door <laughs> asking them to please follow me <laughs> because we have an appointment. <laughs> <laughs> and that is where, again, the all access, Oleria access comes in handy. And, mm -hmm. um, and I pick them up and one of the singers even still had his mic on and his headset, his microphone headset, and had to give that away uh, while or right before we, we left. And they were very afraid that if we go through the festival, people would stop them and want selfies and want pictures and that we would never make it to the forum. And I thought, this is what we have to do right now. The, the, the day before even, Saku, uh, the, one of the vocalists, had been in the festival and had hung around with people and watched bands. And um, he was in one of the stories on the Tuska Instagram. And he actually told the people that they were going to be at the Tusca Forum and to, and to come there and such. And he did the same while we were doing through the festival. And that was really nice. So he was kind of promoting the event <laughs> while we went. <laughs> we were going and we were going very decisively. And every time they were approached and, and somebody wanted to talk or something, he was just like, we're going to the farm. Just come along. Just come with. And so we arrived in a bigger group and had them both mic'd up. And at the start of our conversation, I I gave my best. I had been preparing this for a while also to introduce the thing or and say hello and welcome to the people in Finnish. And I was very proud of myself. I I, I thought it was the best joke ever <laughs> to then say, I actually don't speak Finnish, so, <laughs> so that's all I can say. <laughs> and now we're switching to English, but nobody laughed. <laughs> <laughs> but the singer did ask them to please give me some applause. <laughs> it was a good A for effort. <laughs> that was the start of the derailing, I guess, though, because the rest of the, the, the talk... Um, they had so many stories to, and, and anecdotes to tell, but of course they were easier to tell in their native language. So at some point there was a lot of Finnish happening and I didn't really understand, but the audience was laughing. So that was good. <laughs> um, so yeah, for that episode, we will have to release it with a disclaimer that that episode is in Finglish. Yeah. All right. <laughs> no. <laughs> That's just a, our gift to Finland, I guess. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and after that, we had um, we had the next session right after. Marco Hietala had a bit of a delay, though, with his arrival. And when he finally arrived and we sat down on that couch and started talking, it was the most beautiful thing. He opened up about very personal topics. and. It was, it was really emotional. It was really beautiful. I think that's the one I'm looking forward to the most. The most? <laughs> I bet. It was the one I had been looking forward to mm -hmm. the most. Well, Alisa as well, but both of those. Cool. And that was the forum and we were done. And, 
And that was also another one. Marco had his gig started at 1915 and he had an hour and a half. He had an hour and a half to go prepare. So that was also cutting it pretty short, especially since his arrival was delayed. So everything was a little bit in a hurry. So I'm very, very grateful to him for taking the time. We didn't, we didn't um, prolong the interview by a minute. We knew we had to respect his time and just let him go. And, mm -hmm. and everything that he gave us before that was, was, was beautiful. So it was really nice. So you were able to see some bands also on Saturday. We were able to see some bands on Saturday as well. When Motionless in White started, the rain also started. So we decided it was time to go to dinner. <laughs> 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 But afterwards, In Flames was incredible. I was impressed. They played all of the songs that I wanted to see. Uh, they did not end the gig with End the Transmission, which... Mm -hmm frustrated me a little bit because it was it, the joke is right there <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we made that joke <laughs> but uh, no it was really great we saw some Villevalo as well before we went to have a karaoke after party with the <laughs> with the forum team and some friends because we wanted to celebrate that it had all gone so well yeah I was really impressed and grateful that everything went fine the team was was really nice as well i'm very grateful for the support of uh, steffi and krista and um perto and yusa our uh, light and sound technician and producer they were so kind and um, i was sad that i couldn't uh, meet eka the festival director with whom i had been organizing things and working from the beginning but of course he was also very busy so And was there another party at On the Rocks or <laughs> wherever <laughs> in Helsinki where you went to? Yes, the On the Rocks was the official after party as well as uh, another club called Praha. Mm -hmm. uh, but we weren't there. We just went to this karaoke bar mm -hmm. that was kind of near the venue. It was right across the street from my Airbnb. That was very practical. <laughs> <laughs> because I'm very tired and I uh, couldn't um, I didn't make it too long that night at least mm -hmm. but then the Sunday started a little later as well so we could sleep it off and oh and on the Saturday morning um, I did my quick stop by the Pride Parade as every year well not every year but the second time <laughs> <laughs> As I was, as it was planned. Yeah, that was also super fun. The weather was just really not playing along, and Sunday was even colder, so that was not cool. But Lorna Shore was incredible. Lorna Shore started the Sunday on the main stage, and they were incredible. I hadn't been a huge fan of the band, but I actually the the music got me in the feels. Mm -hmm. And it was amazing to see that there was this huge crowd around the main stage, like filling every little corner that there could be. And this huge crowd started moving before the last song of Lorna Shore towards the 10th stage because Electric Cowboy was playing right after. Mm -hmm. After Lorna Shore ended, because we did stay until the end. We moved with this whole huge crowd all together towards the tent stage, which that was already packed. We had to watch from outside and listen mainly. Watching was a little, <laughs> yeah. a little more of a miracle, but we had to listen um, from outside to the electric cowboy set, which was incredible. Afterwards, we again went for a crew dinner. And in the evening, we saw a little bit of Delane and Ghost. Ghost was amazing. I That was the first, my first time seeing Ghost live. And I have to say, it's just such an entertainment thing. The music is great, of course, but it was there was comedy happening on stage. There was just so much showmanship. That mm -hmm. was, that was what, what really impressed me. Yeah, I hope I can catch them on a festival again. It It's... Long ago that I saw them, more than 10 years ago, they didn't have this huge show back then because they also were not the headliner mm -hmm. of that festival where I went to. 
but I'm not a big fan or not fan enough to pay money for mm-hmm. <laughs> for entrance. For <laughs> so only ghosts. I hope to mm-hmm. yeah, I hope to see them on a big festival stage somewhere soon. Yeah, but they did have a, an amazing set. The whole production was great. And even the set list was great. It was it was such a party. We danced around a lot. And that was a good hyped up show to end the day with, to end a festival day with. And mm-hmm. to be the end of the of the festival weekend completely was was really cool. Yeah. And that was a night of an after party. But but wait, wait. First yes. you met the drama of Electric Cowboy. Yeah, that was before. That was when we were going to the dinner. Because ah, okay. the Crew catering was right beside the backstage for the tent stage. We ended up meeting them while they were going off the stage towards their backstage and we were going towards dinner. And so Mm -hmm. I screamed something like, uh, hey, that was a great show. And uh, the drummer was like, why are you talking to me in German? We're in Finland. (laughs) (laughs) And I was like, yeah, but I actually come from where you're from, kind of. And so (laughs) that was funny. And this was this whole, you know, screaming across 10 meters because they were going in the opposite direction. And after the dinner and before Ghost, we went over to say hi to their backstage because I know their tour manager. Mm -hmm. So uh, we just went to say hello and too bad that they couldn't come to our forum. Also, you deserved, you totally deserved the main stage. And they were like, everybody wanted to put us on the main stage. It was just for logistical reasons that we just couldn't do it. Mm-hmm. And apparently the festival put some extra screens so that people from outside could see them. Yeah. Because they knew that it would be packed and that mm-hmm. they actually they actually needed to be on the main stage, but was weird planning. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, but it was good. They were happy. They were happy that it was their last show uh, before before a break of two weeks after many, 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 many days of festivals and touring. And so they were also, um, yeah, really in the mood for an after party. <laughs> <laughs> nice. So, yeah, I ended up singing karaoke with the sound technician of Electric Cowboy. <laughs> <laughs> And taking a few selfies um, with the people from Blind Channel, with Will Ramos from Lorna Shore. It was fun. Nice. (laughs) Yes. And that is why my voice is still a little hoarse, because that night was was the night of many talks in a loud bar and stuff like that. And I'm glad that I didn't party too much the days before, because Mm -hmm. I was just so nervous that if I went out on Friday uh, or on Thursday, that my voice would be gone and I couldn't make the interviews. So I'm glad I didn't do that. Mm-hmm. I was also able to party a little bit at the festival and that was that's always nice. Awesome. Were you able to also visit Helsinki? Yes. Just like last time, I got myself a week's pass for the city bikes. So I was biking around a bit. Um on Friday, we went shopping into the into the downtown area. Also because Krista, uh, Steffi's friend, was it was her first time in Finland. Mm-hmm. So we or, or I rather because Steffi just really had to had to rest her her foot. She later even got sick with the flu. It was just awful. Oh no! It was not her weekend. <laughs> it was not her weekend. But yeah, so I I went around the city with Krista for a little bit, and um, and on Monday we had the Monday there still, and we could walk around a little bit. Um, we went to I took them to the cemetery to the very big cemetery in Helsinki, and um, and Susanna uh, our our longtime listener as well. We met at the forum after the forum on Friday. And on Monday, uh, she hung out with Krista and me a little bit, and we went uh, walking at the cemetery. And then I, I, I realized that apparently not everybody goes sightseeing at cemeteries when they are sightseeing. <laughs> 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 I think cemeteries are beautiful, okay? And I'm very respectful. I don't take my dog on a walk to a cemetery. I think that is a little... Just because strange. you don't have one. <laughs> <laughs> Even so, I wouldn't. <laughs> Even if I had a dog, I wouldn't take them for walks at a cemetery. But okay, 
before you hit me with another question, if you have, we made it to the news. The mm-hmm. Helsinki Times mentions us by name nice. in their article about about the Tuska Festival. Yeah, and you are also part of at least one day recap. Yeah, video. we're in one of the recap videos on their Instagram. That was our festival weekend. It was a lot of fun. Awesome. Will it happen again next year? I sure hope so. I'm really hoping that it will. We are having a, a a meeting, a Zoom meeting soon, where we will evaluate and review everything and and see if we can make that like a long term partnership. And uh, yeah, keep making the Tusca Forum um, by bleeding metal and make it better and cooler. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, nice. I think that's everything that I wanted to know. I'm really looking forward to listening to the interviews and uh, record some <laughs> discussions about the interviews with you for the upcoming episodes. Um, for everybody out there, keep following us on especially Instagram because I think that's the only social media we are really active on. Mm-hmm. It's at Bleeding Metal Pod. And... Also, uh, check out the Tuska website for infos about the bands who will be there next year and that might be in the Tuska Forum if we do it again. Let's see. Yes. <laughs> yes. Keep your fingers also, crossed for us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, send us the good vibes. <laughs> and if you were there and if you enjoyed the forum or if you have some comments and feedback, do reach out to us. Um, through Instagram or through Discord as well, um, or email. All of that is in our link tree. And you can also subscribe to our newsletter. We're going to start uh, sending out newsletters every so often, probably three, three to four times per year. <laughs> <laughs> so no spam. So, no spam. Yeah, we won't spam you too much. Um, but we will let you know what's been happening over here at Bleeding Metal. Stay tuned after the the Tuska forum episodes are released by the end of September. We're going back to interviewing people. Mm-hmm. We have a few people who reached out to us who want to come on the podcast. So that's always exciting. And we're going to have some cool conversations as always for you to, to listen to. Then we also will go back to our bonus episodes where we talk about albums festivals events i don't know everything <laughs> that comes to our minds games I yes talk, talk about games yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you for listening and goodbye <laughs> <laughs>